Hello everyone, my name is Yi Yongan from GIS ASA. So I'm honored to be a part of this conference. Today I'm going to share with you some of the work on visualizing tumorigenic cells through a small molecular frozen frog development, which is one of my projects. Let me start with the introduction, which will help you to understand a little more about this research. So not a few, actually quite a bunch of people lose their life due to cancer. So as you can see in this data, cancer is one of the leading cause of death, uh, death worldwide. And so it has been a worldwide primary health concern for a while. So for instance, in 2020 in the US, there will be an estimated more than 600,000 cancer deaths. And as you may know already, most cancer deaths are caused by relapse and metastatic tumors. So for example, for many patients, doctors may first remove tumors by surgery as much as possible for debarking the tumors to make chemotherapy more effective. So and the remained cancer cells will be removed by anti-cancer drug treatment as a conventional chemotherapies. However, chemotherapies target rapidly dividing tumor cells and is unable to kill the highly chemoresistant tumorigenic cells. So that this tumorigenic cell can be survived from the anti-cancer drug treatments. So these chemoresistant tumorigenic cells are known to be responsible for cancer relapse due to their tumor initiating ability, and which is why these are called tumor initiating cells or TICs, and also widely known as uh, cancer stem cells. So these cells are also mobile and leading to the spreading of the tumors in other part of the body called metastasis. So through mobility and the tumor initiating ability. So these tumor initiating cells have been considered as a realistic target for the effective cancer treatment. For example, these are the cells of lung cancer tumors, which show their worst survival among the different cancer types. And we can check their tumor density by confirming the in vitro tumor spore formation of the tumor cells harvested from the lung cancer patient tumor, which is an in vitro surrogate assay for assessing the cell linear and tumor uh, capacity. Also by tumor formation in immunodeficient mice after the subcutaneous injection. However, it's hard to this discriminate or visualize the tumorigenic cells from the non-tumorigenic ones. So if we have a TIC-specific proof that can stain or identify tumorigenic cells specifically, so we could visualize it. So, and it could be a valuable tool in many different ways, such as isolation of TICs from the tumor cells which could contribute to the studies of TIC biology and like novel marker identification and may help in the development of the in vivo imaging tool for the TICs, which could be used for diagnosis and prognosis for cancer, as well as uh, targeting tools for the cancer treatments such as the TRC, anti-TRC drug development based on the chemical structure of the probe or as a drug delivery tool. So to identify a particular type of cells, through four conjugated antibodies that recognize the cell marker have been commonly used. So various antibodies have also been develop, developed against the TRC surface markers and successfully applied for different types of cancer. And CD166 positive cells, for instance, has shown the tumor initiating ability while negative cells did not. 
So however, these antibodies are not suitable for in vivo imaging and targeting TICs because these markers are expressed in the other various somatic cells and normal stem cells as well. Also, multiple antibody combinations are usually required to target TIC selectively. Uh, so also limited to a specific range of cancer types. So there are several intracellular markers for TICs specifically, but as it is a molecular molecules and antibodies have a limitation to target intracellular marker, so to be like undetectable in live cells using antibodies. So antibodies have an in, in inherent limitation that is inaccessibility to the intracellular target in, in vivo. So to overcome the antibodies limitations, I developed a small molecule fluorescent flow for TIC by screening the fluorescent compound library. And it is a chemical structure of the probe that I developed. And this compound seemed to brighten some of the tumor cells harvested from lung cancer derived genograft geno tumors in live status. And these pro-positive cells showed uh, tumor density in, in vitro and in vivo. So here are the cells that I showed a few minutes back. Now we can see that some of the cells are stained by this proof, as you can see here. And the pro-positive cells showed the high tumor resiliency in both in vitro and in the mice after the subcutaneous injection compared to the probe negative cells. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about Taiwan development by small molecule fluorescent compound library screening. Uh, Taiwan has been developed by uh, the approach of diversity-oriented fluorescence library screening, and it is an unbiased cell-based screening with a compound library composed of more than 10,000 structurally diverse and intrinsically fluorescent small molecules. So this library has been developed by uh, combinatorial chemistry and screened in various types of live cells to create cell type specific fluorescent chemical imaging probes. So for example, there are three different probes developed for embryonic stem cells by the full screen. And this shows that live embryonic stem cells were co-stained with three different probes. While the Doppler screening is a promising approach for developing TIC probes, this unbiased screening requires a reliably enriched TIC cell culture, challenging to set up due to dynamic population changes during cell culture. So we have harvested the tumor cells from lung cancer patient sample, and fortunately, we have established a highly purified patient derived TIC model for lung cancer named tumor stem cell tumor sphere 32 or TS32 cells, which are highly enriched for CD166 surface marker that I mentioned before in the previous slides as a lung cancer TIC marker. And these cells are cultured in a serum free suspension medium and TS32 cells showed a high CD166 expression along with in vitro tumor sphere forming ability in uh, this medium containing the growth factors like EGF and basic FGF. So to create an isogenic counterpart of TS32, we differentiated them by withdrawing the media's growth factors to produce CD166 negative adherent cells. 
And this data shows that our TRC model uh, are highly enriched for the CD16 marker compared to uh, non TRC cells, that is 32A cells. So, thousands of the compounds were screened against these two cell lines. There was a stronger staining signal for TIC model over uh, non TIC cells for many compounds in the screening. And from prior um, validation, uh, we identified the best compound both by selective staining and PS forming ability. And so we called it tumor initiating cell probe yellow. In a TS forming performance test, Taiwan displayed even better selectivity for the tumorigenic cells and uh, CD166 antibody. So Taiwan stained the cytosolic compartment of the TS cells in contrast to surface marker CD166 antibody staining, but they showed uh, general co-localizations in the TS cells. So this dual staining of TRCs further identified the minor population of Taiwan negative and CD166, CD166 positive cells. So interestingly, Taiwan positive cells consistently showed a um, greater propensity for in vitro sphere formation than TY, uh, TY negative cells, regardless of CD166, CD166 expression. So thus demonstrating this superior TIC recognition of TY over CD166 antibody. So while working on further studies for TY, I found that this probe has some unique features so in the next few slides, uh, I'm going to talk about the features, features of Taiwan. So the first one is universality. I identified that Taiwan binds to Vimentin during the target identification studies. So I carried out the knockdown of Vimentin using siRNA in in vitro in uh, women in expressing TIC line and confirmed Dimish Taiwan signal in a so in as you can see this data and in a converse approach overexpression of women in the non TIC line 32A line which is uh, negative to women and this boosts Taiwan staining and this is suggesting that Vimentin is indeed the functional target of Taiwan in the long, long uh, TICs. And Vimentin is a well known potential marker for TIC. So, some mesenchymal type cells have been found in aggressive epithelial cancer cells. So, studies have demonstrated that. Epithelial cancer cells become mesenchymal type cells through epithelial mesenchymal transition, so EMT. And this EMT is known to provide the tumor initiating ability to epithelial cancer cells like drug resistance and tumor density and migration. And the Vimentin has been known as a universal biomarker for the epithelial mesenchymal transition. So I expected that Taiwan could be applied to many different cancer cell types through Vimentin binding. And I prepared cancer cell lines derived from lung and prostate and colon, skin, ovary, renal, and breast CNS cancer. Uh, for the TIC enrichment using Taiwan. And surprisingly, Taiwan positive cells showed a higher in vitro sphere forming ability in all the tested cancer cells compared to unsorted, uh, unsorted fruit control and 
highway negative cells, so suggesting the potential as the universal TIC proof. And uh, consistent with the um, target, ID target ID data, TIY positive cells in all the tested cell lines sh uh, showed higher expression levels of pigmentin uh, compared to TIY negative cells as shown by dual staining with TIY and the antibody for pigmentin protein. The second features of TIY was the anti-TIC effect. So I investigated the anti-TIC activity and the general toxicity of TIY in comparison with beta ferritin A, which is known as a, uh, which is known as a pigmentin inhibitor. So unsurprisingly, TIY showed a clear anti-TIC activity at higher concentrations, and more interestingly, it showed a stronger selectivity towards the TICs and lower toxicity to non-TICs and normal tissues uh, than beta ferritin A, as you can see in this data. As anticipated, selective inhibition of TIY on TIC line the TIC line cells resulted in the inhibition of sphere formation in a dose dependent manner, as well as complete inhibition was shown at the high concentrations. Next, uh, to confirm the therapeutic effect of TIY in animal model, the tumor induced mice were, the so tumor induced mice were given a high concentration of TIY through the tail bait injection. So when, mo <clears throat> when monitored over one month, TIY clearly inhibits the tumor growth and this is demonstrating anti uh, anti-TIC activity of TIY in in vitro and in vivo. So here is the summary. I have discovered TIC proof TIY through the small molecule chemical, small molecule chemical intrinsic fluorescent compound library screen. And my work demonstrates that TIY selectively stains TICs not only in lung cancer tumors, but also in different types of cancer cell lines, indicating the potential university of uh, universality of the TIY as a TIC probe in uh, various cancers. At high concentrations, TIY showed a selective anti-TIC activity over non-TIC and normal tissue cells. So, so as the first small molecule fluorescent TIC probe, TIY could be a valuable tool for the visualization and isolation of TICs and also for application in cancer imaging and drug developments uh, the targeting women team that are able to counteract relapse and metastasis. So I believe my work would lighten the design of the novel anti-TIC drug development and I'm continuing the studies to get this final goal. So it was the first trial and successful study to develop a probe that can discriminate target cells from its isogenic counterpart. So I'm continuing the first screening to develop more probes for the different types of stem cells so let me share with you about some um, stem cell proof work I've done. So stem cells can differentiate into specialized cells like neurons and keratinocytes or muscle cells, but it maintains their population by cell free neuron. So for stem cell transplantation therapy, a sufficient number of cells is required. So they are propagated by in vitro culture. However, Quality control is as important as increasing the quantity because 
in vitro culture doesn't always provide us with only high quality stem cells that have both properties. So we need to discriminate uh, high quality stem cells from low ones by um, quality control. So now let me share with you about the mesenchymal stem cell probe I developed. So these cells is multipotent stem cells. So they can differentiate into various types of cells. So, uh, and the most significant benefit of mesenchymal stem cell is that they are easily isolated in our body uh, because they are located in various tissue. So many scientists have studied about mesenchymal stem cells as materials for cell transplantation therapy. For efficient transplantation, quality control is also required in mesenchymal stem cells after in vitro culture as some cells become senescent during culture. So we can say these uh, old cells are low quality cells because they are less proliferated and has low potency, potency on the differentiation ability. So for quality control, we need to eliminate these old cells before transplantation. The conventional method for detecting old cells is using beta galactosidase um, staining. So as you can see in these uh, figures, we can easily detect the old cells by the methods, but it requires a fixation step, which means killing the cells. So to uh, eliminate all the cells live, we need to develop a new probe for aged mesenchymal stem cells. To discover the probe by doppler screening, we first prepared both negative and positive control cells from different tissues. Uh, so the negative control was uh, young cells and positive control was old mesenchymal stem cells. And the old cells are uh, derived from young cells by repetitive subcultures. So after several times of passaging young mesenchymal stem cells, the proliferation rate uh, falls low, so resulting in a longer doubling time uh, in old cells. So we did uh, the first screening using the you know, young and old cells, and we discovered this compound. Uh, that seen on the old cells, not young cells, in every type of mesenchymal stem cells to be tested. So as you can see here, all the cells uh, were stained with both our probe and beta galactosidase, and young cells are uh, negative to beta galactosidase and the probe. So uh, I wanted to share with, uh, with you this work uh, as an example of the full application in stem cell research. And I'm currently carrying out the screening for different types of stem cells with uh, diverse collaborators. So, so I like to, <clears throat> I like to finish this presentation by thanking all the people, colleagues and collaborators for giving me the full support to proceed and finalize with this project. Okay, so thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you very much for your attention.